Okay, welcome to part two of painting a fell beast. So, starting off with chainmail and a little bit of Vallejo thinner medium. I tend to use this for thinning all of my paints. So this is just going to be used as a highlight for the metallic work on his sword, his armour and the armour of the fell beast. Because in the previous video you saw the tin bits wash and this is just the second highlighting stage. Sorry, it's a little bit out of shot there. There we go. Bring it back into shot a bit. So as you can see, I'm just hitting the tallest ridges of all of the pieces just to give them a little bit of a highlight. And just making sure all these armors nicely lined, just so it gives it that nice 3D look. This miniature's painted to a table stop standard, not any kind of signature piece. So that's what the uh, friend of mine asked for, just table top standard, so that's what he's getting. Though I did go a little bit further on some parts, just to give it that little bit of extra. You could have just left it with the tin bits wash and not bothered with highlighting the metallic work but I think it looks just a little bit better so I'm just highlighting up his armour plates because he's wearing plate mail underneath his uh, robes and a bit of the harness and head So next up I'm going to be creating a dry brush out of Chaos Black and uh, Codex Grey, so I forgot the name of the colour there. It's a one to one mix. And this is applied to his robes. And this is one of the new Citadel Dry Compounds, Praxian White, or Praxus White, if you want to pronounce it. This is like a thick gel consistency. Sorry, I'm really bad at getting this in shot at the minute. And I just used that to dry brush the spines along its back just to give it a little bit of a highlight. Now this is the uh, soft black wash from Vallejo, thinned with Vallejo airbrush thinner. This is just used on his robes just in the recesses to knock it back a little bit. So this wash dries very matte. Although it is a very strong wash, so I tend to water it down one to one with the Vallejo airbrush thinner. Okay, so now I'm using tin bits. Oh no, sorry, it wasn't tin bits, it was dark flesh to base coat all the reins.
see Skull White. And this is, I'm just base coating all of the flames on his sword. To get it ready for the flame effects I'll be adding in a minute. Okay, now I'm using a Warlock Purple to base coat the tongue. And this is bleach bone. I'm adding this to the warlock purple as a highlight. Okay, so now I'm using Tamiya Clear Yellow to start the flame effects. This is thinned down with Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. You can use Tamiya X20, but I find the Tamiya Airbrush Thinner works just as well and is a lot cheaper. And this is just getting applied all over the flames and a little bit of the blade for OSL or object source lighting. Since I shot this video I've decided to change my camera angles a little bit more just to make it a little bit easier. This is clear orange, same Tamiya colour again. This is thinned again with one drop of Vallejo thinner. It's not mixed with the colour but it's just separate. And then this one is applied about halfway down towards the bottom so the top parts of the flame is still yellow and then you're using this as a wet blend. I prefer to wet blend with the Tamiya acrylics opposed to everybody else's because they have a lot longer drying time. On average it's about an hour drying time and you don't need to use any retarders or anything to slow the drying process. It's very easy to wet blend with these things. And lastly it's Tamiya Clear Red. Exactly the same application here. Just thinning it down with one or two drops of Vallejo airbrush thinner because this paint is very treacly and then this is just applied again about halfway up the orange paint and blended in with the orange I went back in with the yellow a bit more and just re-blended the highlights down so it gave us a nice transition of colours. And then I went back in with the chainmail just to clean up the edges. So now we're on to assembly. We'll just take out the uh, paper clips we put in at the beginning, trim them off a little bit. Be careful when doing this that you don't ping any pieces of metal off into your face. I'm just cleaning it off with a hobby knife here, just making sure it's nice and smooth. And just drive it in the pieces because I 
did find I needed to clean some of the parts out. Got painting. Kind of reaming out the hole a little bit more to fit the flat, this peg in. And as well scraping away some of the paint so the plastic glue has something to grip to. Because otherwise you'll just be gluing the paint and not the actual plastic. So even if you just scratch it up a little bit where the contact points are you'll get a better fix. As well a good a little good tip I found when doing previous after assembly painting is to get a fine brush, um, a natural hairbrush, not a synthetic brush, and get yourself some liquid poly. The uh, one that's pretty much water based. I use the humbrol here to make the assembly. But then when it's done, if you get a very fine brush, sort of like a double zero, and just run a small bead of glue and let the capillary action of the poly cement go down the thing, literally have no seam then, and you don't have to worry about anything. And you can still paint the miniatures in that way, and you're getting that seamless thing and not ruining the paint job. So thank you very much for watching, please remember to comment, rate and subscribe, and next up you'll see the finished model in all its glory. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.